Welcome to Susie Mout from Work Business School and to Rob Deguri from EY. Um, it's exciting we're going to talk about the uh, big data implications and behaviour, uh, especially in financial services. So, first question, huge amount of hype around big data over the last few years. Will it really help us predict everything? That's a really good question. So, big data often gets portrayed as a, as a crystal ball and this can be quite difficult for us to swallow, you know, how can we possibly predict what humans are going to do? They're such unpredictable creatures. But I think what people often forget is we're walking prediction machines ourselves. Our decision making is all about making predictions. And we frequently recognise patterns in the world around us. So we know our, our friends and colleagues have personalities and that's essentially just recognising that they repeat the same kind of behaviour over and over again. Um, and we notice bigger patterns, so we notice travel patterns. We know there's a bad time to travel because lots of people will travel then, and there's a better time to travel because there'll be fewer people on the roads. And what big data offers us is a potential to measure these repeating patterns in behaviour in a way that we couldn't before, because we're tracking people's behaviour across a wide range of areas. So we know who speaks to who on their phones, what people buy in the supermarkets from their nectar cards, and where we travel every time you swipe in to a TFL service with your Oyster card. And so this opens up the possibility to spot more subtle, more widespread predictive patterns using intelligent algorithms. If I could bring Rob in there and just give an example, say perhaps, would you find that in the insurance industry, for instance, that this predictive data, data can be used in a predictive way? So I think in financial services and insurance mm -hmm. specifically, the, the concept and notion of modeling what the future will bring has been pretty much a, you know, a very good capability for them to compete, manage their profitability, enter new products into new markets. I don't think that that's really the issue here. I think, I think if you look in financial services today, something happened in 2008 where both the regulatory community and the, the financial services customers lost a huge degree of trust in those institutions. The basis of that lo loss of trust was they didn't realize, they didn't believe that these institutions understood their positions with regard to risk at that point in time that can only be supported by a fact base. So the conclusions that, that both of those constituencies have drawn from that 2008 uh, um, issue has been a lack of focus, they believe, that, that these institutions have on data management a, a, as a function. I mean, going, it's going back to how to actually people view, and then the younger generation view, for instance, banking. Um, what sort of changes is, is, is technology making there? I mean, I think if you talk about young people and, and their interaction with banking, then you see um, recent innovations like Payum that you can easily pay your friends with your mobile phone. This, this, is, a, this is a big move forward to, to um, young people, to, that they can interact in a much more natural fashion for them um, with, with their finances. If you go back to the shift and the, and the change, mm -hmm. the transformation that, that financial services has to go through, this, this focus on, on, on transaction is echoed in their IT, existing IT infrastructure. Their existing infrastructure is not designed to easily give up data and information in the way that they want to look at that data information to understand the behavior of their customers, clients, so on and so forth. So how they are responding is in probably three different ways. Some are responding as a, as a call and a response to the regulator, who the regulator has said, you need to get your data management uh, uh, function in place to respond to us. Some are responding to the return on equity question, which is how can I reduce my cost to, to deliver profit um, on the basis of using data to guide me through that journey. And others are looking at it from an enablement perspective, where they will look to compete with challengers in the space and new disruptive technologies. And where will your research go next, do you think, with any particular directions that's, in mind? Right, that's a very interesting question. So we've, um, we've done a lot looking at, at text, so um, things that people are searching for on Google, on Wikipedia, mm -hmm. text that people are posting to Twitter, to Flickr, 
Um, but obviously, increasingly, the information being posted online is not just textual. You see a lot of photos of videos. Um, and so we're starting to find some interesting insights that we can pull out of geotagged photographs using the photographic information itself, both to better measure what's going on in the world right now, because we don't, or at least we didn't, used to have eyes everywhere. Any vision for a bank of the future from you? Sure. So three things. They're going to return to becoming banks. So this concept of having 3,000 people running IT systems and running reports, I think that will be a, an outsourced strategy or one of several strategies. I think the banks will focus back in terms of what their real business is, which is banking. And I think they will focus on customer and relationships with customers and trying to really become a service provider again to win certain markets. Now, having said that, I think they will also there will be sort of a disaggregation of these large organizations, either by product or in some cases the regulator will force ring fencing to a degree, which is... A, what do you mean by <coughs> disaggregation? They'll break up in, in, in a way. We'll, we'll do, exactly, yeah. Okay. So I, I know that there's probably four or five of the major banks uh, that are considering what they're going to do with their capital markets business. Is that something they want to, to decouple from their retail banking business because of the risk it applies? The asset and uh, capital ratios, liquidity ratios are completely different in both businesses. However, the regulators say if you're going to run it as a whole business, you've got to keep it uh, safe yeah, from a risk perspective. So I think in the future we're going to see things much more digital, much more banking, much more focused on customer behavior and coming at it from a service provision perspective.